when we talk about emboldening people to live their highest potential through the transformative power of love, and we also, here at Centers for Spiritual Living Worldwide, we teach tools um, for personal and global empowerment, for personal and global development. And we also believe in a world that works for everyone in all of creation. And so when you look at these two high ideas of Centers for Spiritual Living about teaching personal, teaching tools for empowered living for personal and global, on the global scale, the personal scale, and we know that we are trying to create a world that works for everyone in all of creation, then what that does is that lays the responsibility where? Right in our laps, doesn't it? That we are living, we are here to be the power and the presence of love on earth. We are here to be the power and the presence of love shining out into the world. And we are here to not only empower and enrich ourselves, but we are here to empower and enrich others and to lift the community, the larger community, and lift the world as a whole. Yes. So, so <clears throat> when we talk about taking it out beyond the walls, we're talking about not only taking spiritual principle, but we're talking about being the example out beyond these walls. Not just sitting, as I've said before, on our meditation cushions, though please sit on your meditation cushions. Um, but not to just do the work solely in consciousness, though that is where it starts, but we also must be active and engaged and moving out into the world as a whole, right? When Susan B. Anthony was asked about prayer, whether she prays, uh, she said this, and I wanted to share this with you. I pray every single second of my life, not on my knees, but with my work. Work and worship are one with me. I cannot imagine a God of the universe made happy by my getting down on my knees and calling him great. All right? Yeah. Right? But when we talk about social engagement, there's a difference between social engagement and social justice, though they're both doing work in the world. Social justice, sometimes when we talk about social justice, people get upset or they think that, oh, with social justice ideas, then it has this great big centrifugal force, and then all of a sudden we're talking about separation, we're talking about otherness, we're adding to the fire, we're adding anger, we're adding um, animosity, and it's just loud noises, countering loud noises, and it's just adding to the loud noises, right? But when we talk about social engagement, notice the difference, it's about engaging with another. And when we engage with another from the heart-centered space, then what we're doing is we're engaging with each other from a place of compassion. We're engaging with each other from a place of love. We're engaging each other with a place of openness and recognizing our oneness. So a heart-centered engagement is coming from a completely different place than perhaps a social justice um, place. However, they can still both be working as a means to a similar end. So my question as we engage with social engagement, heart-centered social engagement or spiritually motivated social engagement, as we engage with this topic and as we engage with the ideas that are happening in the world and the things that are going on in today's society, I ask you this. Are you listening with your political ears or are you listening with your spiritual ears? And I invite you to listen with your spiritual ears. So when we talk about heart-centered or spiritually motivated social engagement, we're talking about not coming from a place of standing against something but actually standing for something. So what is it that you stand for rather than what is it that you stand against? It's easy to look out in society, it's easy to look out on Facebook and social media and see all kinds of stuff that we stand against. That we feel, ooh, that's wrong, that's bad, that's no good, right? It's easy to see these things. But instead of focusing there, what I ask you to do, or what I invite you to do, is what is it that you stand for? What is it that you're standing for? Go within and find that place, that spiritual place, that spiritual truth, that spiritual principle, and invite that to come to the forefront. What is it that I'm standing for? If I'm standing for love, if I'm standing for a family, then 
My position is different than if I say I'm standing against separation at the border. I'm standing for the integrity and wholeness of families. And that is the energy that I bring to it, and that is the place that I bring, that is the place that I come from. Yes, there might be anger, but what that is, is that is uh, what we call righteous anger or divine discontent. And we can use that to motivate. We can use that to speak out. We can use that to shine light. We can use that to make a difference. Because it's coming from a heart-centered place. It's coming from a spiritually principled place rather than just being mad. Rather than just like engaging silliness on Facebook, right? But it's coming from a place of spiritual intent, of wanting to see things shift, and not adding fuel to the fire, not contributing to the problem, but actually coming forth and contributing to the solution, being part of the solution rather than the problem. 